welcome back to another video. If you're new to the channel, please don't forget to hit that subscribe button down below and go check out our Instagram pages where I post daily original photos of our life, our animals, and everything in between. So for today's video, we're going to be doing a few things. We are going to be doing updates on some of our breeding females that are either getting ready to lay, have already laid their eggs, uh, showing you some of the other species in our collection, just kind of doing updates on them, as well as we're gonna be feeding our monitors, and we might throw a few other things in between. So we'll just have to see. But first, let's check out some of the snakes and do some of those updates. All right, so a little update. All of these little knobs or these little green tags on these bins, we are waiting for these girls to have their pre-lay sheds and these girls have already had their pre-lay sheds so I put a date on there uh, so I have an idea of when to expect eggs from those two and then this is Sunshine I just wanted to give a little update who has already laid her clutch and it's cooking in the incubator oh look somebody had a duty I gotta clean up lovely but this is Sunshine and Sunshine went back on food pretty quickly uh, we waited a few days after she dropped her clutch, and we started her back on a weaned rat. We waited five days. We gave her another weaned rat, and now she is back to a small medium rat weekly till we can get her weight back up. And I wanted, it's been about, what, two weeks, so I wanted to get a current weight on her and kind of keep track of her weight as she gets, gets a little bit healthier after dropping those eggs. All right, so we got our handy dandy scale, just a six quart bucket to stick on top. Turn this puppy on and zero it out. And now we're going to grab a snake. Come on, honey. Let's see where you're at. So we are at a 1,085, let's call it. Starting to look a little bit thicker. All right, let's put you back and I'm gonna clean up that poop. Poop clean up. All right. Give her a little spritz. Never get the snake wet, drops their body temperature too much. Nice and clean. Look at you, you're so beautiful. See, she still has that kind of saggy space from where she dropped her eggs. Once we get her all healthy, and we won't be seeing that anymore. Hi, honey. So we're hoping to get her back up to weight here in the next few months, so she'll be ready for next season. All right, so she's already putting back on weight because she was 1,023 post delay. So she's already starting to gain a little bit of weight, which is good to see. All right, so we marked down her weight. That was her last shed, wasn't that long ago. Gonna have to be making her a new card soon. So, doesn't take much to have uh, detailed logs and keep track of your snake and everything they do. Very, very simple. All right, this girl is supposed to lay sometime around Mother's Day or thereafter. And this is all she's been doing. She comes over for a little bit of water here and there, and that's about it. You can tell she's starting to get a little bit more plump all around this section, so those eggs are developing nicely. And then Miss Nagini should lay, hopefully the first week in May. You can tell she's getting plump, and she's been in this nice donut on the warm spot for a while. And this girl is notorious for laying 10 plus eggs in her clutch, anywhere from 10 to 13. So we are super excited about that because we don't really know who the daddy is. That's kind of a who's your daddy clutch with Nimbus. 
Nimbus is our super pastel leopard ivory, possible black pastel. So I, I thought I saw a possible lock, but they were kind of hiding it. So we don't know for sure, but we didn't think he was getting the job done. So we ended up putting our stud Thunk in with her. And we did see visual locks between him and her. So we're just gonna have to wait and see when the eggs hatch out. We're kind of excited because whoever is the daddy, both really good genetics between these two. Ah, look who it is. What's up, beautiful? Does that mean you want to come out today? <laughs> oh, this is our black-headed python stoic. He is absolutely beautiful. How are you? Oh, your hissy pants? So you don't want to come out? You being hissy pants? We've been working on snake hook training with this little dude. And all it is is just giving them a little rub underneath the chin or a little tap on the head to let them know it's not feeding time because these guys love to eat and they will strike at anything they think is food really, really hard. They pack a punch. Hi. What's up, dude? absolutely stunning Australian species right here. This was one of my my dream snakes and we have it in our collection. So awesome. So once these guys are out, they're actually pretty mellow. They're pretty feisty when they're little. They take a little bit of handling and training, but once they get bigger, they're not too bad. They do take the snake training for a lot of them. This is I would say more for the experienced keeper. Only because these guys can get very cage defensive and food aggressive. So you got to know what you're looking at when you take them out of their enclosure. But overall, a very, very good species of snake. If you're looking at one of these for maybe a second or third species to get... They are a little bit pricey, but they are absolutely amazing creatures to keep, and they're just visually stunning. All right, we'll go ahead and put you back, dude. A little bit of that orange belly. And then de depending on the individual, their colors do vary a little bit. They all have that jet black head, but sometimes their pattern will be a little bit lighter or a little bit darker with more contrast. Um, Stoic is a little bit darker with a little bit more contrast, and then his belly is not as orange. I've seen other individual snakes where their bellies are just super, super orange, almost like the Womas. So it's just dependent of, on the individual. Hi, dude. This guy is definitely over three feet now, so it's kind of hard to hold him with one hand because these guys are actually very, very active. We're going to be cleaning the enclosure soon. He's got a bunch of little spotted urates. We're going to be cleaning out bins here in the next week. Give everybody fresh tubs. It's about that time of month again. But absolutely stunning. All right, dude. That's enough for today. Nope, go back in. Nope, go back in. Nope. There you go. Oh, and here's Miss Peppy. Posted some pictures of her on our Instagram. She just had a fresh shed a couple days ago. What's up, Miss Peppy? This is how Miss Peppy hangs out most of the time. She likes to chill in her hide and just have her head poking out. You don't want to open this cage at night, though, when it's feeding time, because then she'll be right here and she will dart out to try to get food. But for the most part, she just sits right here and chills and looks beautiful. <laughs> I know a lot of people think when they watch our feeding videos that the snakes are always super aggressive. Well, that's not the case. They usually just chill unless they it's in the 
late evening time and they know it's food time. Otherwise, they just kind of chill. Oops, I got it in your water. That's it. Have a nice nap, Peppy. Here is our biggest girl in our collection at over 3,500 grams. And she just had a fresh shed. I did not physically see her ovulate, um, but I'm gonna count this as her prelay shed. She is looking very plump. She's kind of sitting sideways. She is hugging the hot spot and she has quit eating. So even though I didn't visualize that ovulation, this could very well be her prelay shed. So I'm probably gonna go ahead and mark her tub with a little piece of tape to keep an eye out and maybe put a date on hers as well. Oh, but there is, where's your head at? There's your head. Yeah, I know you're kind of getting all poopy pants, but I need to grab your shed back here. Oh, well, there's her head piece, which is good. Some of these girls are getting a little more aggressive since they're getting ready to be laying eggs. So got to be careful. And there is a nice full shed. Well, except for the headpiece. Hey, okay, we got eye caps, which we always look for. And that looks like the end of the tail. And I'm pretty sure that's a full shed. She looks very, very good. So we're just gonna pull this out. She is good to go. I usually have a bag. Today, I just have a stack. All right. All right, so I went and marked her tub with a possible date. So that way, um, if she is gravid, then I'll know when to start checking for eggs. And I usually just do uh, the 30 days from the prelay shed, if that was her prelay shed. Um, sometimes it can happen a little bit earlier than 30 days, or sometimes you can go longer into 40 or 45 days post prelay shed. So this is just a, a date to where I know to keep checking on them daily just to make sure. The same with these. I believe Sunshine went past her 30 day mark by like four days or so. So it's just a general rule of thumb. It's not an exact. This is another girl that I did not see ovulate, but she is looking very, very thick and she has gone off feed. So we shall see very, very beautiful. Just GHI Mojave. Kind of one of my favorite two jean combos here. Love her sides and that dorsal stripe. Woo! Or the dorsal patterning. She doesn't really have so much a whole stripe, but I love those light colors with the contrast of the darker, smoother browns. And this girl, I don't want to get too close because she is strike happy. But yeah, she has plumped up a lot. So we knew she was building follicles and we've paired her with a male. And then she just, I did not see her ovulate, but she quit eating and she's been really hugging that warm spot, staying curled up and looking uncomfortable. So I can only assume that we've hopefully got some eggs developing in that girl. All right. So now um, we're going to go ahead and feed our monitors. Today we have to feed them. Now, Arlo, our smaller Asian water monitor, I do feed every day. There might be a day here and there that I'll skip, depending on the meal that he's had the day before. Um, but our black roughnecks that are pretty much adults at this point, I feed every other day and I feed an appropriate meal. Um, I think I've said this in a few other videos where I feed them. The males and the females get fed the same amount. Even though the male is quite a bit larger than the female, females need more food to build up that fat storage to properly develop eggs or follicles or what have you for egg laying. So in order to keep the males lean and the females a little bit fatter, you feed them the same amount. I know it's kind of weird because males in most monitor species are so much larger than the females. You would think that they need more food and that's really not, that's not the general rule. So I feed both of these guys the same amount and it has worked out really well. The female most of the time 
it's really hard to keep her eating. Uh, right now we are still working on feeding off tongs. I do leave food in there, but she, I don't know if she just doesn't like eating it out of the bowl. Most of the time I, I get a better feeding response if I feed her off the tongs. But again, we haven't had her that long, so all in due time. And then our male, I do feed him off tongs. I don't usually leave food in there for him. And he will take food whenever I give it to him. So I give him food sparingly, of course. And then a variety of different things. Uh, we feed our monitors chicken, salmon, ground turkey. Um, we feed them whole rats, whether it's pinkies, fuzzies. I typically don't give them large rats. Um, <laughs> I have shown this in another video. It got pretty gruesome. Uh, the rat was already dead. Uh, so if you want to go check out that video... Um, but they use those nasty claws that they have when they are trying to consume something. And I've had it happen twice now with Littlefoot, who I am looking at right now. He's, he's uh, down here looking at me while I film. Uh, but I've had it happen twice with him now that as he's trying to maneuver the rat in order to swallow it, he gets his claw in there and he literally guts the rat and it's very disgusting. So I try to keep the rats a little bit smaller so they're just easy for him to go down. So I usually give multiple pinkies, fuzzies, or even weans. I usually don't go bigger than that with him um, just because I don't want to clean up the mess. It is, it, it's not a pretty sight. It's absolutely disgusting. He strings the entrails all over the enclosure. It's disgusting. So, and then we also have to clean this guy's water. And we're probably going to let him out and roam a little bit because it's been a few days since he's been out. Give him some exercise and enrichment. So first, we are going to start with feeding Arlo, our little baby water monitor. So let me go get the food and we'll get right on that. On today's menu, we have pinkies and chicken chunks. So we're going to go ahead and feed the monitor lizards now. me and Arlo play. <laughs> in, out, in, out, in, out. <laughs> Where do you think you're going? Where do you think you're going? Is that yummy? This guy just barely started tanking rat pinks for us. So awesome. 
started taking salmon and some other things. It's taken us quite a few months to get him to take other food items other than chicken and ground turkey. But we're making progress, huh? Was that good? You want another one? I go get you another one. All right, I've never fed him two, so let's see. Will you eat another one? Oh, somebody's hungry. That was a nice meal today, huh? Two pinkies. He twists his neck like that to push it on down. Very good. All right, on to the next one. He got fresh water today. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and change this guy's water real quick, and then we're gonna let him out in the house. But before I do that, I'm gonna go try to feed our little girl Libby. Um, I kind of have to go back and forth because she will come out to where I can try to feed her off the tongs, and then she'll kind of retreat back underneath her hot spot where um, I put her soil box, and she's been digging in that a lot. So I'm actually gonna be pulling that out here in the next week because um, because we've been feeding her a lot, a lot of times that'll stimulate follicle growth. And a lot of times, if I don't know what she had going on before we received her, it, she didn't look like she was carrying eggs, um, infertile eggs, I'm, I'm assuming. So I just wanna double check and make sure she didn't drop any infertile eggs, uh, maybe get it a little bit more moist. And I just wanna double check everything because a lot of times monitors, female monitors, um, when they cycle, they will drop infertile eggs. So I need to double check in there and see and kind of mark down when her cycles are because that'll give us an idea next year when we want to breed um, kind of when her cycles are and when she naturally does it because obviously we're inside and then we'll kind of have an idea of how to artificially mimic the cycles and that's a whole different topic. Um, but yeah, so let's go ahead and feed her and see if she'll eat and we'll kind of keep going back and forth throughout this video and try to feed her. All right, time to feed the little girly child, and she loves her rats. Oh, what is that? Yum, yum, yum. She's been digging in this box. So, Mama will have to go through the box and see if you lay any slugs. You gonna take it? I know you love rats. Here. What's up, Mama? Here. You're not going to take it on camera? Is the camera scaring you? Yeah, smell that. It's good. Here. Oh, there. I dropped it again. Here, you want it? Hi. Trying to see what the camera is. Yeah, it's not scary. I know. Yeah, come get the, come get it. There you go. It's not that scary. All right. Well, I'll probably just leave some food in a bowl for her where she can get it. Um, she has taken the food off the tongs for me a couple times, but I think she's a little wary right now because the kids are doing homeschool. So, we be patient. I leave you alone to dig in your box. All right, time to feed big boy. What's up, dude? Oh, does that feel good? And you smell food. I know. Food. These aren't all for you, so you can't just go for the taking here here no stay he is just gonna take what he wants <laughs> here eat some chicken eat some of this eat some chicken there you go not on my floor there you go take it in there not on there either This guy is a mess compared to the girl. He is a disaster. He tears apart everything. Anything he can make a disaster of, he does. Well, yeah, you got it in the substrate, you big nasty. Here, let's try putting it up here. Here. 
eat that one. All right, a few more pinkies and you're done, dude. Here you go. Oops, dropped it. All right, one more and then the rest is for your lady friend. Getting it down. All right. We are going to put this away over here where he can't see it. Elsie will eat it. Hi, dude. How are you? How are you? You going to go digest now? I don't have any more food. I don't have any more food. Yes. So when it comes to feeding, the boys... And the ladies all get fed the same because you want the males to stay more lean and you want the females to stay fat for that egg production. And then the way you can tell that these guys are healthy is they get this kind of long wrinkle across the body. Now, when we got Littlefoot, he was a little bit smaller and he didn't have that wrinkle. He had a very droopy belly and no wrinkle. And so we knew he was unhealthy and fat because the gentleman that had him before fed him nothing but rats and really didn't know how to take care of him. So we have been giving him a variety of different foods to get him to a healthy weight over the last few months, which is probably a good, I don't know, eight or nine months or so. He has gotten back to a healthy weight and he's almost doubled in size. Where are you going? What, food's done? So now you're gonna go chill in the water? I gotta change his water right now too. But we are looking forward to giving this guy a new cage here pretty soon. He needs some climbing space, more exercise. Right now, we just let him out in the house to exercise. <laughs> Gets his brain going. Stimulation is good for these guys. Very, very intelligent. Where are you going? You gonna go sit? You gonna go sit on your throne and digest? He's in shed right now. Look at all that. Look how thick that tail is. He's a big boy, even for a black roughneck. Oh, he came back. He wasn't done visiting. So he's got all this shed. No, no, no. The dogs are in here. You can't come out right now. Here, I'll let you out in a minute. Come here. He's a big boy. Look at that. He just doesn't care. Not a care in the world. I'm going to have to clean that, so you're going to have to get out, Big Nasty. Right now, I'm cleaning his water about twice a week because he is disgusting. Tracks all the substrate in there, pees and poops. Very much to the similar problem we had with the aquarium with him. When we build him something, he's going to need a pond filter pump to filter out all his waste. Oh, you are not coming out here all wet. No, no, no. You crazy sucker. Now you're a wet pup. He's like, no. Curiosity always gets the best of these guys. <gasps> and as soon as I open her cage, she goes back there to hide. So we are just gonna leave the little last bits of food for her to eat and she'll come out and eat it at her leisure. All right, well, since she retreated in the back now and she's trying to dig again, um, now we're gonna go ahead and let's clean his water and then we'll go ahead and let Littlefoot out in the house a little bit. Fresh water change.
just letting himself out. Someone's just taking himself out for a stroll. This guy has grown so much since we've had, that's my hand. He is a big dude. Where are you going? Hopefully not to poop on my rug. This guy's been marking his territory for a while. Where are you going? No, you can't go outside. Mama locked the door, sorry. Not until we get you on a leash. Do you hear the doggies? They jealous that you're inside out and about and they're not. Did my shoes taste good? Those are mama's work shoes. <laughs> what are you doing, huh? What do you smell? You're getting all worried. Oh, he smells outside. Sorry. Nope, no can do. All right, back in the enclosure. Come on, fun time over. There you go, go check out your fresh wawa. There you go, big butt. Someone is a bit sleepy from all that food. <laughs> all right, everybody. That is it for today's video. It's just updates and feeding our monitors because we're kind of at a standstill right now. Um, we're just waiting for weather to get really good so we can start going back to doing our DIY projects and building new enclosures for a lot of our animals. We have a lot of projects coming up. Uh, not only cages for both our water, or not our water monitors, both our black roughnecks. I always want to call them something that, they, that they're not. But we're going to be building two brand new enclosures for our black roughnecks, as well as building some custom enclosures for some of our other species of snakes, such as the blackhead and Miss Pepper, our uh, Suriname redtail. They are going to be getting new setups we are planning on doing a new setup for our green, um, our emerald tree boa, nebula. I'm getting all tongue-tied and forgetting what I want to say now. Uh, so we've got a lot of projects coming up. We're just waiting for weather. And then, of course, you know, supply chain issues and just trying to get everything in so we can keep going with our dream and what we have in store for our future. So again, thank you for watching. It's always awesome to kind of take you along on this journey that we're on, share everything with you. We're hoping to get outside and do some more outside adventures, maybe do some herping. Um, I've been seeing a lot in our area that the rattlesnakes are coming out and different species of lizards. We have collared lizards in our area. We have blue fence lizards in our area. We have a bunch of different species of snakes. So I'm really excited to kind of get out and get herping here pretty soon. And also, we're going to be doing some hiking adventures. Um, we live north of Reno, Nevada, so we have access to a lot of the Sierra Nevada mountains with waterfalls and just very spectacular views. And I can't wait to take you guys on some of those adventures. We are very outdoor people, and we've kind of been stuck in our house for this last year just because of COVID and other things going on. We haven't been able to do some of those things that we like to do. So super, super excited to get out and be able to do those things again. So again, thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing. We will see you in the next one. Stay safe. Stay sane. Get out there and make your own footprints. Bye.